Mr. Leon Pereira, if you'd like to take your two cuts together, please do. Yes, Chairman. First cut on easing movement restrictions on migrant workers in dormitories. Sir, migrant workers have experienced movement restrictions for almost two years. While the December update allows up to 3,000 workers out daily, workers are often not able to go out on work days. What is the Ministry's roadmap to ease restrictions? Can the government explain specific criteria needed for the next round of easing, be it caseload, ICU usage and so on? The vaccination rate among dorm residents is 98% and that ought to be a consideration in easing movement restrictions. Sir, the restrictions are taking their toll on the mental health of migrant workers and pose social risks. Experienced workers might prefer to go home, worsening the manpower shortage and making our economy hemorrhage experience more productive workers. We are suffering reputational damage in the international news. Al Jazeera quoted one worker as saying, quote, I feel very sad about the difference in the lives between me and the rest of the people, unquote. Chairman, there are practical reasons to ease restrictions, but it's also the decent thing to do. Second cut on migrant worker retention and productivity. Mr. Chairman, sir, there are economic benefits to retaining migrant workers in our economy who are familiar with Singapore and to increase their productivity, which would mean we need to employ fewer. Currently, a work permit holder can only transfer to a new job with employer's consent. An exception is the retention scheme, which gives eligible workers 30 days to match with a new employer. I support the thrust of this scheme, which is similar to what Workers' Party members have called for, but it does not go far enough as it does not apply to all work permit holders or WPHs. I call for it to be extended to all WPHs. In addition, if their existing employer cancels their work permit through no fault of the worker, the worker should be allowed to stay in Singapore for 30 days to enable him to find a new employer, regardless of whether his employer consents. The worker will be responsible for his own food and lodging during this time. He can elect between joining the retention scheme if eligible or relying on this window. An article by the NGO TWC2 states that many workers had their work permits cancelled and were repatriated because their employers had no work but did not allow them to transfer jobs, even though other companies needed workers, worsening the manpower shortage. The 30-day transfer window addresses this. This proposal will not encourage turnover of workers because it only applies if the employer unilaterally decides to cancel the work permit. Second, to grow productivity and incentivize work pass holders to stay with employers, I propose allowing employers to bond them for uh, up to two years in exchange for sponsoring formal training. The length of the bond period can depend on number of training hours, provided that the duration of training and fees meet certain requirements. ITE could partner BCA, which already runs training courses, to develop appropriate courses to increase for uh, migrant worker productivity. So upskilling is important in reducing the number of semi-skilled foreign workers needed and hence our dependence on foreign labour. Thank you.